I am Tony Reid. I'm the Chief Executive of the Game Developers Association of Australia. What is the uh, GDAA's involvement uh, with uh, GHAP that we're here at today and how does that kind of uh, shape what the vision is for GCAP compared to some other conventions or some other shows that are happening during uh, International Games Week? Sure. So the GDA actually owns GCAP. It is, it's the premier industry conference for developers. We create GCAP for the developers to have those industrial conversations. And the show is every year it's themed and it's based on the conversation that's happening in the industry, either locally or internationally. So the theme this year is the shoulders of giants and it's, it's where we've really come from. I mean, the, the Australian industry can take a lot of pride in what it's achieved and it's achieved as a result of a long, great history of game development. So it differs in what, what else is happening during Games Week because we're not a consumer-facing show. This is trade only and it is about skills development. So it's a, it's a very, very intense conference and you walk away tired, but you walk away with new friends and you walk away with a lot more knowledge. Because it is an industry event in Games Week. There are others such as Melbourne, uh, Unite Melbourne, sorry, yep. and uh, GCAP Loading, which is along the same lines. What, what is GCAP? exclusively wanting to bring to the table that other industry events, and, and this could be more than just within Games Week, mm -hmm. what is it trying to bring to the table that other industry events don't offer? I mean, with something like Unite, that's very obviously very specific to Unity. With PAX, it's very consumer focused. GCAP loading is, is student focused. GCAP itself looks at skills and looks at how we develop as a, as a sector. So it brings the sector together to have those conversations and from that we can develop plans going into the future. So GCAP is not only, I suppose, an industry game development conference, it's also the conversation that an association like the GDA needs to hear um, so we can plot our future course in Australia. Like, Where do we want to take this industry? Um, how do we get a maximum amount of support? And GCAP is instrumental in that. Earlier this year, uh, the Senate uh, did an inquiry, the Australian Senate did an inquiry on uh, the Australian games, uh, games development scene yep. after its ups and downs over the last uh, last few years. What really were some of the main findings uh, to, that, that were taken away from that inquiry and has much been done in the time since? So, so the inquiry revealed eight rec or presented eight recommendations, um, all of which said we should be supporting this industry. And it came off the back of George Brandis cancelling the $20 million um, Australian investment, uh, Games Investment Fund, which was still a really short-sighted thing to do. Um, how much has been done? Very little. I know that um, Senator Scott Ludlam is still championing um, the, the inquiry and the results of that inquiry. I think for us, the, the next steps is going to Canberra. Um, we've not had a huge amount of reaction from the Arts Minister. Um, there's very little appetite for games in that space. They seem rather drawn to very legacy-oriented entertainment forms um, and pumping a whole lot of money into those. So I think my next step is, okay, let's find a more progressive minister, introduce them to games, educate them about who the people are behind games and why we make games, and start the process again. Um, there's got to be somebody within the Liberal government that is going to care at some point. You know, they, they, they're talking innovation a lot, um, but they don't seem to want to talk to one of the most innovative sectors there is, which is surprising. Within that, that idea of innovation, obviously uh, a lot of the people involved with the GDA are based here in Melbourne and Film Victoria has been really spoken about in uh, supporting games and, and games development, games culture in a really monumental way and uh, International Games Week is probably a good sign of that. Yep. Uh, from what you've seen in other states like South Australia, New South Wales, Queensland, what have you seen other states do uh, that that maybe developers more locally here in Melbourne or, or Victoria more widely uh, would do well to take note of? I, just, I mean, there's, there's multiple answers to that question. The states are start, starting to come together and back games. I mean, Queensland has been incredibly proactive recently and they, they've, you know, they've certainly looked at the models in Victoria um, and they're adopting a, a financing model for, for game development, which would be great. And it'll be under one big screen program, which is lovely. It means that we're not sort of isolated and put to the side as you know, it's the games people over there. It, you know, games has become as important as film and TV. New South Wales is lagging behind, but you know, Adelaide or South Australia has always been really pro its games industry. They, they don't have the amount of funding that, that I think they would actually like to have um, to provide game developers. And WA, these are small communities and they're still growing. And so it's really difficult for the government to justify um, putting money in, but that's going to change and it'll change in the next 12 months. And Victoria's, it's different because you know, way back in Jeff Kennett's day, he recognised the importance of technology and innovation and he implemented the, the games program, so the digital media program out of Film Victoria. And the government's been really proactive. So Creative Victoria, who put a lot of backing behind you know, Melbourne International Games Week, 
Um, they also own, well, I suppose support Film Victoria. They provide the funding to Film Victoria for production. Um, you know, they they are really proactive, and I mean, I don't know if you saw Minister Foley's speech this morning. You know, he is the reigning parliamentary champion in Crossy Road. Uh, he loves games. His kids love games. Um, he gets it, and he, he's made a concerted effort to understand why and who, um, and that makes a difference. You know, when when you have somebody that is pro that progressive, and and sees the value to the state going forward, that makes a difference. And and those kind of ministers are few and far between, unfortunately. Um, we need thinkers in government, and thankfully in Victoria, we absolutely have one. You know, we're seeing the same in Queensland right now. You know, the more thinkers we get, the more games will, will come to the fore. Thank you so much for your time, Anthony. Oh, anytime.